All right, gang, we're now going to take a look at some conceptual ideas about how do you accrue for liabilities. So we're going to take a look at some various examples, make sure that you see how they're done and that you feel comfortable before we do a full-blown exercise and challenge you. Let's begin. In our first item, what we're going to note is that this particular case, there is an invoice dated December 15th. You can see the date. It's going to be December 15th in this particular case. And it ultimately says with terms 230 net 60, a liability related to the purchase of the widgets exists at year end if the recipient has not paid the item. So you'll notice right here, if you're reporting the actual payable gross, then it's very simple. It's a debit to inventory and a credit to accounts payable for the full 4,000. If you're reporting it under the net method, then you would anticipate that you're going to take the discount, in this case, of 2%, and therefore that would be $80. So you would show the debit to inventory for $3,920, the less the $80 discount that you anticipate taking, and the credit would be to accounts payable. Our next item shows you an employee time card. The time card period covers days in December, you'll notice, a couple of days in December, and then a bunch of days in January. Assume the fiscal year was December 31st. This company would need to accrue for the hours worked in December, even though the payday will not take place until January. 32 hours were worked in December. You can see that that was the 27th, 8, the 28th, 8.25, the 29th, 7.75, and the 30th, 8 hours. If you added all of those up, all said and done, that's 32 hours. So in this case, 32 hours, and then we would make an assumption in this case, let's say the hourly rate is $15. So we're just presuming that. That's not on the time card. It's actually in my facts that I'm giving to you. So 32 hours, $15 an hour. Therefore, we would now book the journal entry. And the journal entry would be a debit to wage expense and a credit to wages payable. So the expense would hit the P&L. We'd have a current liability at year end for the wages payable in this particular case. So that's the next one. Our next scenario here is going to be a loan agreement. And in this ca case, we had a loan between the first bank and Wilson Company for $800,000. And we borrowed it on 4-1, right? That was there, 4-1, year six, right? And is due in three years at a rate of five and a quarter percent interest. Interest is an expense that must be accrued when incurred. At the end of year six, three months of expense have already been incurred. Now, why do I say that? Because payments are due in April and payment is due on October 1. So October, all of October, all of November, all of December, we've occurred interest, but we don't pay it until next April. So three months worth of interest would have been accrued. So the following journal entry is now necessary. We're going to debit interest expense, $10,500 and we're gonna credit interest payable for the same $10,500. There are many types of payables and accruals that a company must consider at year end. These items may be recorded by the company on a monthly basis, but it is vitally important to make sure that the liability balance is complete and accurate in the financial statements for financial statement purposes. So gang, what we've learned right now is that you have to look at the facts, and once again, another little trick is always looking at the dates. What's the period of time that relates to the journal entry they asked? In that last one you saw, it was only the last three months that you had to factor in because they had made a payment in October. So that had covered everything up through the end of September. So all of October, all of November, all of December had to be accrued based on the facts in this problem. So hopefully this helps. You're now ready to try a full-blown exercise.